How you doing everyone? This is Chef Izzy with Del Mar College. We are here to cook some Mardi Gras food, some uh, seafood gumbo, some steamed rice, and some cracked cornbread. I'm Chef Claudia, welcome. I'm glad that you're joining us and we're gonna be doing some King's Cake in just a few minutes. I wanna welcome everyone to our broadcast. Uh, this, is, uh, this is new for our program and uh, we like to share what we're doing here. And also we're anticipating uh, on having a new uh, culinary art building on the south side. If you don't know about it already, I highly recommend to uh, encourage the young, the young kids of today to get motivated, come and check out our new building. Uh, we're also uh, gonna be uh, doing different things such as uh, andouille sausage. We make sausages in our class. Uh, we also make cheeses. Uh, we also make all kinds of uh, smoked here, all kinds of meats. We also have international cuisine. Um, and speaking of cuisines, one of my favorite growing up, uh, Justin Wilson is one of my favorite chefs growing up as a kid. And I'm gonna do, uh, in tribute, I'm gonna do a recipe, a seafood gumbo recipe, um, by the way, the way he would do it. I'm very inspired by this, uh, this gentleman that passed many years ago. But anyways, um, what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off talking about gumbo. So there's many ways to make gumbo. Everyone claims they have the best recipe. This is your very basic recipe, but I tell everyone to step out of your comfort zone. Um, first of all, the biggest problem with gumbo is the roux. Okay, when you're making a roux, um, it has to be dark. It has to be really dark, almost burnt, but not burnt. It's, take it to the edge. When you start smelling uh, nuttiness, and you start smelling uh, that nice toasty flavor, uh, uh, aroma, that's what you're looking for. So you start off, it looks just like this. Okay, so it looks, it looks white. Or, or it could be blonde. And if anybody knows roux, uh, roux is going to be 50% uh, fat, any fat you want, and 50% flour. And you make a nice taste out of it, okay? The biggest problem I have is people prematurely add the liquid to it, and you don't want to do that. So now, this is what it should look like right here. The roux should look chocolatey, if you would, nice and dark, okay? And again, 50% fat, 50% flour, and Step out of your comfort zone. Use some duck fat. Use some bacon fat. Use any kind of fat you'd like, okay? So that's the gist on, on the roux. Okay, so here we have uh, the gumbo. And this is just the, the, uh, the base of it. And what I have in here is the roux I showed you. It also has four cups of wine, uh, white wine, that um, people think, oh, uh, kids can't have it. It has wine. Alcohol uh, cooks out at a very low temperature, maybe 125 or just right around there. So it has four cups of white wine. Um, recipe cost for water. I went, in and, uh, went ahead and added some chicken stock, a little bit of beef stock. So we have chicken and then we have seafood. So here um, I started to incorporate the liquid to the roux that I just showed you, little at a time, making a paste. And as it gets uh, looser and looser, you keep on adding it. If you add all the liquid at once, you're gonna have clumping and balling up of the flour and it's hard to get out. There's ways to fix it, but that's another story. Um, so now I've incorporated all my liquid and I put a whole chicken in here. I cooked the whole chicken and I deboned it, I skinned it, and it's been cooked already. So now I have the nice base of my gumbo. So the second biggest problem with gumbo, in the very beginning, they put the seafood. Well, the seafood doesn't take very long to cook. I highly, I highly encourage you, I highly recommend you to put it at the very end like I'm gonna do. Second thing I'm gonna talk about, very simple, very basic cornbread in a cast iron skillet. And the crackling cornbread has fresh cracklings Pork, pork rind, if you would. And what you do with that is you're gonna cook it down uh, in some, a little bit of water to soften it up. Uh, drain the water after about 15 minutes of simmering. Drain the water out, add butter to it, and then you go on with your recipe like you would a traditional cornbread. So cornbread and gumbo go very good together. And the last thing that I have is some steamed rice. It just finished a bit ago. I turn this up a little bit because I'm gonna incorporate my seafood now. You don't do this until the very, very end. You literally could put this in here and let it sit for about, if it's at a good simmer, a good five minutes is all you're gonna need. Anything more than that, you're gonna kill it. Okay, it's already dead, so be very careful with that. I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate uh, some, some giant uh, scallops, some sea scallops. Okay, some really nice scallops here. I'm gonna incorporate that. I'm gonna incorporate some uh, Texas Gulf shrimp. Go ahead and incorporate that. And dewy sausage. Uh, it's up to you. I ask you to cook in layers because you don't throw everything in a pot and just let it go. That would be very boring and bland. So this andouille sausage here, you could saute it to give it some texture, some crispiness. 
But in this case, I'm going to pour right in there. And then also, I have some crab. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to give it a, a just a really quick, um, a really quick turn here. Mix everything in gently. And you can smell that goodness even through my mask here. Okay? And all I'm going to do is let it sit. Five minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes is okay. But anything past that, it's overcooked, your seafood. I want to I want to send it over to Chef Claudia. Thank you, Jeff. So what we're going to be preparing now is the sponge for our king's cake. To have a really nice moist cake, you need to have a base with the sponge. And here we're going to have our sugar, yeast, flour, and warm milk. And it's all in the recipe, so you can see that. Now the milk has to be warm around 110, no hotter because you can kill the yeast. You have to pay attention to that. And this is very quick, just to hydrate the yeast and activate it and make it alive and awake so that we can have a nice fermentation. This is called a sponge. When we're doing rich dough, you can mix a sponge and add it to your bread to add some depth in flavor. And you can start your fermentation with a little extra burst of energy. So just make sure that you don't have any lumps in the yeast and the flour gets hydrated. This one, you need to rest it for about 15 to 30 minutes. You can even leave it a little longer, but I will not attempt it for more than a couple of hours because it has enough food to stay away for a short period of time. Now, you're gonna start working with your flour. And it's always important to have all your ingredients measured. When you come for the program and the baking specialization degree, we have all types of classes from our fundamentals for advanced baking. You will learn how to make uh, from basic breads, loaf breads, cookies, cakes, roll cakes, donuts, custards, spice, tarts. This smells really good. We have orange zest in here. And you want to make sure that you have a good infusion in your flavors. So this is considered part of the rich family in the bread. And that means that it has a higher content of egg, butter, and sugar. That's why we're doing this step here. So having the sponge, if you notice, is beginning to change. It has a little bit of movement and bubbles and air. That's when you know that the yeast is still alive. If you have some yeast at home and it doesn't do this, that means it's dead. We're gonna mix a little bit of the flour and zest just to infuse it. And I'm gonna give it about another two minutes in this while Chef prep his plates. Um, so here's what I have in front of me. It's my gumbo. I, I have it at a probably medium meat. And as you can see, nice, nice uh, sea scallop in here. Looks very, looks very nice. We also have, we also have our uh, sausage in here, crab meat. It's looking really good. Okay. Uh, I am about to plate up. So let me go ahead, cut this uh, cornbread up that I have here. Okay. In the cornbread, uh, there's plenty of things you can do to it. Uh, you can, you can add some, uh, you can add some uh, color to it if you like. Uh, sometimes I add some roasted corn to it. It depends on exactly what you're looking for, okay? Um, and then, in this case, I have some cracking in here, which is going to give it a nice texture, a nice crispy texture. Okay, so just to give you an idea, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plate that up at the, uh, right on the top of my uh, plate here, so it is the varnish. Okay, so this, this seafood is ready. And I do have my rice uh, under here already. So these little bowls uh, are nice to pre-plate your rice and it keeps the rice warm at the same time. And with the with the condensation of the steam, it just releases it right out. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go and start plating some of this gumbo up. Always clean the, the bottom of the, uh, the ladle so you don't make a mess everywhere. Get some more in there. Let me get some, uh, find some scallops, some chicken. Give it a nice clean on the edge. Okay, 
we're going to do a couple more. Okay, so this is a very hearty. Uh, you can make this. You can make this a little bit looser or a little bit thicker. And I'm going to explain to you here in just one second uh, on how you how you can thicken it up um, here in a second. And then you can get one more. This is smelling very very good. If you don't like seafood, you could always uh, use this chicken. Or if you don't like chicken, you can use just uh, seafood. It's up to you. There's a lot of things, many different ways that you can cook with it. And uh, this is this is Cajun. If it was Creole, there'd probably be some tomatoes in here. Okay, but it is Cajun. So let me go ahead and clean up my dishes a little bit. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add uh, just a little bit of a uh, little bit of garnish, a little bit of color in here. Always think about color because people will eat with their eyes. Okay, a little bit of red. Okay, and then I'll put some cornbread here, right, right at the edge. And this cornbread, this cornbread does have that crackling, so you're gonna have a good texture, a uh, nice crispy texture. Okay, let me get one more. Okay, and then the last thing uh, we'll talk about is gonna be file, right? File is the powder from the Sassafras uh, tree. Uh, you get the leaves and the stems. It's part of the eucalyptus family. And this is, uh, it's like a must in, in gumbo. You add this at the end, it's a thickener and it also has a good flavor to it. So you can't have gumbo without file as a, as a side. I hope you enjoyed uh, the gumbo here. Um, Hope you enjoyed the gumbo, and I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, this little session we had, this live demo. Um, I want to encourage all the, all the uh, high school kids. Uh, they have culinary arts programs. We do do a credit here. Uh, we also offer all kinds of programs or different classes for cooking. Uh, we have uh, we have a lot of advanced baking. We have uh, basic foods. We have uh, a la carte. Everything's cooked to order. Like with a 15 minute window, it's gonna come out. Uh, we also have uh, international cuisine that I have this evening. We're doing French cuisine. Uh, so we offer a whole a variety of classes. So I encourage you to get uh, your friends or yourself. We have people from 15 all the way up to 68 years old attending our program. So it's never too late. Don't be a statistic. Would have, should have, could have. Thank you for your time. And here we have already these, you say it was a, a five, 10 minutes and the sponge is already more alive. You see it bubbling, you see it active. So it's, this is a proof that your yeast is still very active. So while we keep mixing our product, we're gonna hold the yeast towards the end. We start our mixer. We're gonna add the eggs one at a time. And while I'm mixing the dough, if you have any questions about our programs, you're welcome to tune in and send them. Our degree is it's an associate degree and it's two years. Uh, it's a very complete program. I highly encourage you to come and visit. When by appointment during COVID time, please. But also our new building is coming up next year, so it's very exciting news. And it's gonna be a state-of-the-art program. So I highly encourage you to take opportunity to come to your local community college and be part of this very exciting career. This is the one job you can take pretty much anywhere. Everybody enjoys eating. So you wanna make sure that you are joining us for this. So after this dough is mixing, I'm going to, I hold it a little bit of the sugar, because remember I talk about that this is part of a rich family, the rich dough. So I'm holding this so I can develop more gluten. So I'm going to start adding the butter, and then I'm going to alternate the sugar in it.
So another thing that is very popular for this cake is you can have different ways to present it. You can do it with a filling, without a filling. You can have cinnamon sugar in the middle. You can have a cream or nothing at all. So it's not necessary to have a filling. Today we're gonna do a cinnamon filling for this one. We add the sugar in a rainy manner and it's little stages at the time. And as Chef is about mentioning, we have very, uh, a lot of variety in our classes. So you're gonna have from the very basic to the advanced. So the program is actually very complete. We have our culinary arts, baking paper specialization and hospitality management. You want to wait for that one to have a nice. So now you can look at this one, it's more active, it's more spongy, right? And even if you move it, you see how it behaves different already. So seeing those changes is important. Time to add it here. And at this moment, the fermentation begins. Baking is a process, it does take time. But seeing the changes in the product is really exciting when it comes to bread. But in the baking program as well, we do all different sorts of products. We do wedding cakes, we do breads, we do desserts, pastries, laminated dough, croissant, danish, name it. We have a lot of products to work with. Always a good habit, scrape everything down so that everything gets well combined. And I think one of the things that is more common in breads is either drying your dough too much when you're mixing so, or putting too much water. So resist the temptation to add more water if it seems right, because remember that we're adding butter into it and that will turn into a more soft dough. It will absorb. And at this point, what we're gonna do is gonna increase our speed and develop a little bit more of the gluten window. We call it window pane. And I will show you one after uh, they already have fermenting, but I wanna show you to finish this one as well. The smell is really good because it has orange threads. If you don't like orange threads, you can omit that. And for the filling, you can do pretty much anything else you like. The dough is usually going to finish it in the table. You're going to dust your table very lightly. So it's very important that you put very light coating in it. And the whole process in mixing the dough is going to take between three minutes in low speed and then maybe another three minutes in high speed. So it's not that terrible. Your house will smell wonderful and your friends will be jealous <laughs> that you can bake bread actually. To, to scoop everything out of the bowl, this kind of scraper is really good. It has a round edge. We put everything in the counter. And again, you want to take a little bit of flour, very light coating. Leave the scraper as a friend and fold it. If this one is soft for your taste, this is your friend to move it around, right? And kneading can take by hand more time than it's by mixer, so don't uh, judge the same mixing over there than mixing by hand, so it is a different process. But always folding, If your hands get sticky, you can do very light coating. Leave some on the side, tap your hand into it, and help yourself with that. Um, the, let's talk a little bit about the program, I guess. We have a few more minutes. And check, please, will you mind passing me the other dough? After we achieve our dough, you flip it over, 
make it into a this. And we're gonna put it in a container with a little bit of oil to proof. Cover it with plastic. Let it breathe slightly, not tight. And this goes into a warmer space for proofing. Reach though, as this one. This is a dough that we already proved by the magical TV, not just easy say. Uh, normally you will let them rise twice in size. These ones don't rise twice in size because it's more dense. It has a lot of eggs, it has sugar. So it doesn't behave the same than your rolls or anything else. For this dough, look how different it becomes after it already proof for about an hour, an hour and a half. So you had several choices on this. If you want to put a filling, we can roll it out. And I always like to roll out the dough, middle to the front, go back to the middle, middle to the back. And always pay attention that your dough is not being stuck in the bottom, because at the end you will not be able to release it from the tape, right? If you feel that you're deforming your dough too much, don't stress about it. Let's say, you know, you're making a circle instead of a square or a rectangle. Use your bench paper and this will help you shape it right away. So it's always a way. All right, so we have this one. We double check. Please relax. Now we're gonna put a spread on it. You can, as I said, you don't have to put a spread on it, but if you wanna have a flavoring, your choice will be either cinnamon rolls, like cinnamon rolls, cinnamon and sugar, cream cheese, pastry cream, pudding, anything you want. This one is just butter and sugar, cinnamon, so you want always the smell. You're baking, you want to have a nice smell. And who doesn't like butter? No. I think we all like butter. And if you don't like butter, uh, what can we do for you? <laughs> You're missing life. <laughs> no, but you can find substitutes, you know? If you had to do something vegan, you can find substitutes. They are shortening, they have butter flavoring. You can do that as well. So you do a spread of this all even, and you're always gonna leave a little extra, where you're gonna, well, you know why? Why are we gonna waste? Doesn't hurt a little bit more butter and cinnamon sugar, right? Okay, so always think about layering flavors. So for this important, you wanna add also texture, add flavor, and add the softness of the dough, but you also wanna have a crunch. So you can sprinkle some roasted pecans, walnuts, cashews, whatever you like. Is your king's cake. You can put any flavor. And after you do that, make sure that you have a very light press so that they don't move.
and then you start rolling. So you're gonna take this one about an inch. And when you start rolling this one, you're going to pull towards you a little bit to make it tight. Then we're going to stretch a little bit. Now, ideally, because this is a rich dog, you want to chill it. And after you chill it, you're going to just put it in, a, in an oval shape. This is very soft dough. And because it's a very soft dough, it's more difficult to handle if you have a room temperature. So if you see this one, is going to be more uh, stretchable but you can break it. So make sure that you have this dough chill a little bit, roll it out, put it in an oval, and this one is proof. So if you look in here, when it's proof, it bounces back, right? And when this one bounces back, it's ready for the oven. And it's gonna take about an hour as well. Make sure that when you're proofing this dough, any type of dough, you don't have it under proof. You want to make sure that the dough is absolutely fully rice before you put it in the oven. Otherwise, your bread will become dense. So fermentation is probably the key for any bread. Very important. And that's why we like to invite you to come and join us in the baking program. Because it's by experience. You learn by touching the dough, by kneading the dough by making it several times in different products. So making different doughs, you can make, we made pizza, focaccia. So you learn in different products, not just in rich products. This one going to the oven. We bake that one normally about 350 and it's gonna take maybe 25 minutes. You have to rotate in between you have to rotate the tray in between so you have the even golden color all the way around, okay? So you have color all the sides. And then we're gonna make the icing. Powdered sugar, milk, and vanilla. You can omit the vanilla, but, again, you want flavor, right? So if you want flavor, Add something that will encourage a little background flavor after. We do different things during our classes, but all the classes have a project. So <clears throat> when you join the program, some classes we have the daily lab, and some classes will have a midterm or a project now you see the plates here, you have to come up with your own design. In baking, the same thing. We have cake decorating, you have to come up with your own wedding cake. And you have to create it. You have to come up with your plated desserts, with your own flavor for your chocolate. All different kinds of opportunities to bring that chef that you have inside. But first, you have to develop your technique how to mix, how to learn how theory works. And that's why I consider important attending culinary school and pastry school. Hospitality management, how you gonna deal with the customer. So, even though we all enjoy cooking at home, nothing replaces education. So I encourage you to come and visit, enroll, Cook with us, clean, you have to clean. That's some mandatory thing I hear actually. But learning how to do things properly is important. So the icing, you can make it as thick or as thin as you want. And this one is more in the runny side, right? Do you wanna look at that? How it falls in, doesn't leave a big trail in the bottom. The reason for that is it hasn't rested. This one has been rested for when Jeff started doing that. I mix this after he started talking. This is thicker. We allow it to rest. So 
and I'll show you in a minute the difference in this one as well. So doing different type of uh, glazes as well. Every product has a different finish. Like we make different toppings when we make conchas, when we make petty fours, cookies. All right. And this is smelling more and more vanilla -y and cinnamon. -y. And then this cake is normally decorated with different bright sugars. All right. Now you can buy already sugar made like this. We color our own. But you can put candies, you can put uh, cherries, red and green, because they represent jewels. So that is the main purpose on those. Or you can have dragies, you can buy any of the dragies as well. And this, my friends, will be your king's cake, which you can be here to have a plate of gumbo and a slice of cake but you can have your cake and eat it too, if you come and learn how to make it. So I sure hope that you enjoyed the presentation that we had today. We are glad to have you and we are here to present any, or answer any questions you have. If you, uh, you can always email us and we will be gladly helping you answer any questions. Thank you.